All right, there we go. We are officially live. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris. This is my channel. We love comics. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to listen to one of my videos. And while I'm waiting for people to come in, because I always tend to do these last minute, just make up my mind to do a video, I just want to um, make sure I let people know, especially if you're new, um, if you click on the link that I show here, there's two links that I put. One is for the cashback program. That's the second one. And that is if you sign up, you get um, $10 cash back if you spend $25 or more within the first 90 days of signing up. It's free to do. And the other link, the first link that you see where it says Square Up, uh, that's the link to my website if you're interested in purchasing any of my comic mystery boxes or any of the graded or ungraded comics I still have available on the website. Uh, many key issues there, so if you're interested in that, let me know. Jester says, hello, how's Florida? It's good, thank you. So far, so good. Sith Lord, good to see you. Super Mario, uh, we have some video game characters here. So um, I want to thank everybody, because I think this is an important video. Now, um, I was actually inspired um, by one of my subscribers. So this is one where um, I think people need to think about this because uh, especially this day and age with YouTube and social media people are very quick to judge and attack people for anything that you do and I think sometimes we need some positivity to reinforce what you're doing as long as it makes you happy and as long as it's not hurting or infringing on somebody else is always a good thing so this video was inspired by a, a new subscriber's name is Nick uh, it says at Macomb so forgive me if I mispronounce that, but Nick, he wrote a comment that says, um, this is regarding the uh, video I did yesterday about my top 10 graded comics. And he writes, thank you for your positive videos. I often beat myself up over the fact that some of my books are in poor condition. And your comment about owning one is better than nothing makes me feel better. Now, I've seen a lot of people on both ends of the spectrum. I've seen people like Nick by watching other people's videos where they almost feel apologetic or feel bad that they have a lower grade book or maybe they could only afford like for example the um, True Believers versions of a comic or have a coverless comic. And then I see other people on the other end of the spectrum where they will look down at you if you don't have high grade. And there are people that have literally million dollar collections. Now I'm not saying anyone in particular. I'm just saying there are people out there. And this is true to anywhere on the internet. Where people will make you feel bad if you don't have what they have. So let me first read the response. And I want this to be an inspirational video. So this may not be for everybody. You're not going to see some any comics in this video. But I think this is very important because when it comes to collecting comics... Um, People sometimes that um, don't collect comics may not understand. And I remember for many a time when I was in the dating scene before I got married and people would ask me some of my hobbies and I would tell them that I collected comics or even places that I worked because especially being a massage therapist, I worked with a lot of women in salons. And if I ever brought up the word comic book, they all looked at you like you were a chicken with no head. And they could not understand it. Many girls I dated thought it was just a silly thing. Well, let me first read their response. And I want this to be an inspirational video for those, especially if they're new or have had that situation or, you know, just can't afford the higher grade comics or certain comics. I don't want you to ever feel bad for your collection. But the way I responded to Nick was this. I responded, never feel bad at what you have. Be proud you have it. Uh, better to own one pair of dirty pants than to own none at all. So many people try to make us feel bad because we don't have what they do. No one thing... Uh, oh, I wrote it as a question. No one thing we have that they never will? Empathy. Be proud you have that. Thanks for your comment. And um, connect with what you can afford and be proud of what you have. And I think this is very important for people to understand because if you have seen my collection, yes, over the past couple of years I've been fortunate enough to be able to get some very good books. 
a lot of them because I was able to get them at prices that were much lower than what they're supposed to be. And I worked very hard to be able to get what I've had. Now, if you've collect, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that back in the 80s, I used to collect comics when I was younger. And in the early 2000s, my house got robbed and every single one of my high-grade mega key books got stolen. I'm talking books that were 8.0 to 9.8s. And I'm talking Hulk 181s. I'm talking Tales of Suspense number 40. Um, two Giant Size X-Men number 1. Amazing Spider-Man 129. Amazing Spider-Man 9. The list goes on. Many of my books got stolen. These books would have been worth... Like, for example, I had a Conan number 1 that would have literally easily been a 9.8. It was in perfect condition. Got stolen. Sometimes those things happen in life. And then when the crash happened in the 80, in the 90s, I stopped collecting for years and did not come back or even look at a comic until the year 2015 when I discovered comics again and got back into it. And in the beginning, I didn't have much of a collection and really couldn't afford to spend too much on certain books. Now, if you watch my videos, there are books that I have that are coverless. Like, for example, as of now, and who knows what tomorrow can bring, but as of now, I cannot afford an Amazing Spider-Man number one. But I do have a coverless version of it. It has a facsimile cover, and I think I only paid like $300 for the book. Now, a 0 0.5 is worth about a 1000 or two, so it's a huge difference. But I have several coverless books. I have a Batman 59, which later I upgraded, that's coverless. I have a Fantastic Four number one that I talked about um, in my video yesterday. That is a 0 0.5 that's coverless with a facsimile cover. My thing is, like, and this is why I always say this, Low grade is better than no grade. So if you cannot afford a high grade book, don't let others influence you or make you feel bad because your collection may not be as strong as, as somebody else's. And keep in mind, just because you cannot get something now does not mean in the future that doesn't change for you that all of a sudden, something good comes your way. The problem is most people are so conditioned to think negatively because that's the, how the world really treats people. There's not many people with empathy anymore, with understanding. It's very quick for people to try and hurt somebody or make fun of somebody because they may not have what you have or they have something you don't. You know, I grew up one of the poor kids and my family, you know, had to be on welfare. And we had the powdered milk. And we couldn't buy the very expensive shoes. And kids can be cruel. But kids is one thing. Kids don't understand. But when those kids grow up to adults and do the same thing, they haven't learned anything. And the problem is, the good people end up allowing it to affect them. And trust me, I know that because I even, a couple of years ago, shut down my original We Love Comics channel because of that. Until I realized that only you can allow somebody else to hurt you. So I want this to be a video for people who may be afraid to talk to others. And trust me, you know, I didn't have the internet when I was a kid. You know, when you collected comics, most people kind of looked down at you and thought it was ridiculous or silly or a waste of time. There were not chat rooms or YouTube channels or Facebook pages or any other social media where I could find other people. If your friends didn't collect, you basically kept it almost as a secret. And like I said, girls, they didn't really look up to you back then. Nerds were different then. They were made fun of. But let me tell you something. If you've been following my channel, I had to sell some of my comics, which is why I have the links, and I'll, I'll put that again, of some of the comics I'm selling to help pay for bills. 
but I ultimately sold only a few of my comics. I have probably, like I said in the past, thirty to 35,000 comics. I sold less than a sixteenth of one percent and was able to buy this home and relocate us from New York to Florida. People look up to people that own stocks or own gold or own property, but they seem to look down at people with comics. And yet there are comics that are literally worth millions of dollars. You may not be able to afford a million dollar book. I, I don't own a, a million dollar book. Yes, I have a Fantastic Four number one, but it's a 2.5 and it's um, got glue on it. But to me, I'm happy that I own it. If you look at my top 10 books, that I, the video I did yesterday, and I hope you have, but a lot of them are low-grade books. Like my first appearance of Doctor Doom. It's only a 2.0, but you know what? I'm proud to own it. Because if I was letting other people influence me and be embarrassed to say, oh, I have a lower-grade book, well, then I wouldn't own it. So how does that help? Because like I said in the other video the other day, if you have... Let's just say, like I with the first Doom, Fantastic Four number five. If you have a 0 0.5 or you have a 9.8 version of that book, you still own the book. You can still say, I own Fantastic Four number five. So even if it's coverless, you still own it. And that's why, like, one of the things... See, I'll tell you something. One of the videos... If you want me to watch your channel, one of the things I absolutely love are CGC, CBCS, or PGX unboxings where they don't know the grade and they discover it live or during the making of the video. One thing I will automatically turn off if I see is a person that's always hoping for a 9.8 and if, God forbid, one of their books is a 9.6, they act like they just lost their firstborn child. To me... I mean, and people have the right to do that. Just because I don't agree with somebody's technique doesn't mean I'm going to stop them or attack them. Like, I'm not going to make fun of somebody that prefers to have higher grades. Because, I mean, that's great if you can afford it, and that's great if you love it. But I'm not going to watch somebody that seems like it's a death sentence if they got a grade two points or one point or half a point lower than what they were expecting. The idea of comic collecting, whether it's for investment whether it's for reading, whether it's for the images on the first cut on the cover, is to have fun. And if you are full of anxiety, if you're afraid or embarrassed about your collection because of what others might say or think, if you're somebody that's 15 years old, still in school, and doesn't have a job and can only afford maybe one new book a week, be happy you have it, because trust me, there are plenty of people in the world that will never be able to afford even the, the smallest amount of what you think you have. And if you have somebody who ever insults you for something that you are proud of, then that is a person you should cut the cord with. The problem is these days there are plenty of people that are called internet trolls or bullies. Well, they will gang up on people. That is not the type of people you want to associate with and become friends with. So if you have a collection, be happy with it. And Andrew writes, I think, uh, I feel like my wife thinks collecting and or buying or reselling is silly. Well, Many people can think about things they don't understand. Have her see this video. I needed, because if, like I said, if you follow my channel, you knew I was losing my home in New York. I lost all of my jobs. And I had to find somewhere to live within a two-month period with about probably $500 in my bank account at most. I had to come up with approximately $30,000 within two months. And you know what got 90% of it? My comic books. I hated to have to sell them. 
but in the end, family is more important than pieces of paper. And I was able, within about a three-week period, able to buy the home that I live in now cash. Be able to move here, which cost me an additional $5,000 and more up for gas, tolls, movers, the truck, the dolly to um, carry my other truck, and then spent since I've been here another two to three thousand in registering my car, fixing up the house, getting necessities, things like that. And the majority of that money came from my comic books. And as you could see with my video yesterday, my top ten I did not have to touch. Those are more valuable than the ones that I've already had to sell. And that's one of the reasons why I tell people, if you can, get duplicates of comics. Because, like, for example, one of the comics I had to sell, the only top ten comic I had to sell was my Daredevil number one that was graded as a 6.0. I hated to sell it, but you know what? I have a, a 1.8, and if you saw the video I did a couple of days ago, my first unboxing of my first comic here... I ended up getting another Daredevil number one. So even though I had to sell that one, I still own the book. So I tell people all the time, get duplicates if you can, because if you ever do a trade or if you ever have to sell a book to pay a bill or to just survive, you can do it. So I know there are plenty of mothers out there and plenty of wives and plenty of girlfriends who may never understand what you're doing. I mean, not for nothing, how many people lose money on stocks? You know, you, you have a higher risk of a stock if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have inside information. Businesses can collapse. Stocks can go to zero. Your comics can retain their value, and sometimes, depending on what book you buy and what price you paid, you can make 10 times, 100 times, 5,000 times what you bought it for. So, if a spouse doesn't understand, help them to understand. Have them join it. Like, for example, my wife, she's not really into comics, but she cares about what I do, and she supports it, even if she doesn't understand it. She'll never be a person that goes out and buys her own comic books, and that's okay. And that's why, for example, I'm one of the few channels out there that actually will say the price that I pay for my comics. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think the reason that most people, and I can't speak for everybody, and there's always exceptions to every rule, is that I think that most people, the reason they don't mention the prices of the comics that they buy is because they have a spouse that they don't want them to know how much money they're spending. Because you know, if you're a person that buys a lot of books, comics can be expensive. I mean, just brand new comics now go between $3.99 and $5.99. That's just for a brand new book. And if, you, if it's sold out at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, an hour after a comic book store opens and you couldn't get there in time, that new book now, if it's quote-unquote flavor of the month, could all of a sudden raise the thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred dollars. There are books worth millions. But most people will pat you on the back if you say you have a portfolio, a stock portfolio. A lot of people will look at you like you're some weirdo because you say you collect comics. So all I'm going to tell you is I want you to be proud of the things that you have. And if somebody, whether it's a friend a family member, a co-worker, or some stranger on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, insults you for what you have, that is somebody you do not want in your life. You do not want to associate with negativity, even if it makes you feel more comfortable because you quote-unquote fit in. Why would you want to fit in with a bunch of wolves? Associate with people that will make you proud of what you have not ashamed of what you have a lot of it also comes from the inside see I've gotten to the point where I appreciate people's opinions 
and I respect the honest ones, but nobody is going to influence what makes me happy. And as a matter of fact, like I said before, I have a Fantastic Four number one that is coverless. I have a, an Amazing Spider-Man number one that is coverless. I have a Batman 59 first dead shot that's coverless. Many people said, oh, I would never buy that. Well, you know what's good about that? Is that's less competition and the reason why I got them for so cheap. Because my other Fantastic Four number one, it was graded by CGC at a 0 0.5 with a purple label that said that it had a uh, facsimile cover and not even the right back cover. And I only paid about four or $500 for that book. What do you think the price of that book is going to be, even for that lower one, when they announce a Fantastic Four movie? You think I'll get my $500 back? I'm sure I will, and then some. But yet many people made comments saying, oh, I would never get that book, and you're crazy, and this, that. Who cares what anybody else says? Because remember, it's just an opinion. It only bothers you if you allow it. And trust me, like I said, I had to learn that the hard way. Because there are many people on YouTube that they get their excitement from trying to hurt others. If we let it bother us, that's something on our insides that we need to fix. So whether you've been collecting for 50 years or you've been collecting for 50 seconds, be happy with what you have because I promise you there are plenty of people that are jealous of what you have. Believe me, I've seen many collections on YouTube that put mine to shame. I'm not jealous of them. I don't wish them harm or hope their comics get burned up in a flame. I just say, that's awesome to look at. One day I hope to achieve even something close to what they have. Jealousy is a very bad way to live your life. Because then... You use your energy towards hatred instead of positivity, and, and you wonder why you never get anywhere. It took a lot of hard work and sacrifice for me to get some of the books that I've had. And I'm proud of them regardless of the grade. If I ever get an Amazing Fantasy 15 at a 0 0.5, I will jump up and down for joy. Because that's a that's my white whale. And I had the opportunity to get it, but the house was more important. I actually had the money to get that. And it's actually funny that Alex that you say this, because Alex says, Chris, one day I want to have a collection like you. Dude, we we have so many similar tastes in comics, it's actually quite scary. And uh I, I see some of your books, like your um showcase number four. And I'll give you a prime example. Showcase number four, a 0 0.5 of that book is like four or $5,000. He has, I believe it's a four point, it's either a 3.0 or a 4.0, and it's restored. So what? You know how happy he is to show that book? That was on his top 10 video. That was his number one book. I would love to have that book at a 0 0.5, at a coverless. Yep, and Alex says 4.0. You know, like some people are just, they have to have everything perfect. And that's fine, but never look down at somebody else because they do something different. The whole wonderful thing about this world is supposed to be what true diversity is. Just imagine if everybody did the same thing at the same time, in the same way. How boring a life would that be? If everybody got up at 6 a.m., everybody drove in their certain one car, everybody went the certain speed, everybody went to the same certain job, everybody worked the same hours, ate the same food, had the same relationships, went home and went to bed at the same time, you'd shoot yourself after a week of that. So be happy your collection is unlike others. I love getting signed books and finding out that they were actually genuine because I did the research and I knew what the signatures were and I so underpaid the value of the book. Like, for example, I just bought yesterday a uh, Spawn issue number eight that was signed by Todd McFarlane. Now, I've had him sign my books. I know what his signature is like. 
He didn't. The person selling it didn't have a certificate of authenticity, so they couldn't prove it. But I know his signature. That is as genuine a signature as it can get without actually seeing it. And I paid $39 for the book. Now, am I going to make millions on that book? No. But I now have a book that is signed by Todd McFarlane where I didn't have to go drive to a Comic-Con, didn't have to pay for parking and gas and the tickets to see and if he charges or not, waiting hours online to get a book signed. So have fun with your collection, be proud of your collection, and always remember it can always get better tomorrow. It depends on what effort. If you spend your day crying and whining and worrying and being full of fear, you're never going to get anywhere. Like, for example, I've been stressing out a little bit. I have a little bit of money still saved up, but my, my um, wife is trying to find a job, and I love the fact that she's putting in the effort. But I was getting a little concerned that we're getting close and there's a lot of bills and a lot of things we've had to spend money on. And then all I had to, all I did was I contacted the person that I went to get a job for, the DJ job, and said, if you have any other openings, I'll be more than happy to work because he says he's opening other bars. And he says he's opening two more locations approximately in November. And he says, I can have any jobs I want because he's so happy with the work I do. So I could have sat there and been upset, and I even did a little bit. It's normal to be worried or concerned. But most people at that point don't do anything. If you want a book bad enough, I ask you this. What are you doing to get it? Are you moping? Are you angry that somebody else has it? Are you saying to yourself repeatedly that you'll never have it? Well, what a surprise you don't, because what effort have you put in to actually getting the book? Have you ever thought of doing a trade? Have you ever thought of returning cans to get the refunds to save the money up? Doing uh, odds and ends? Like, for example, like I said the other day, if you do, let's say you do paint work, and somebody wants their house painted, and they don't have the money, and they can't afford to pay somebody to have the house painted, but you know they have comics, you say, hey, I'll paint your house, you give me this comic. There's always ways. It depends on how much effort you want to put in. I could have easily, when I had all those situations and I was about to lose my house and I lo lost all my jobs, I could have easily just panicked and said, oh, woe is me. Where would I be? But no, I decided as much as I love some of my comics, I had to sacrifice some of them. And luckily, like I said, I have duplicates of uh, many of the ones that I sold. And I sold them and bought this house and got us here. There are so many people, especially on YouTube or social media, that will condemn you for who you are, what you believe in, what color your skin, all this other political stuff. Never let them get to you. Because how is that helping? Many channels will show you many expensive books. Many channels will tell you all the deals they get. I mean, I'm one of them. But how many inspire you to be a better human being and be happy with what you have? And instead of hiding it from your spouse, find a way to have them join in with it. If they don't understand, help them to understand. It's all about communication. If you're hiding something from a person you say you love... Do you think that's going to make the relationship stronger, weaker, or stay the same? And Sparky writes, I wish I had a 181. Well, here's the thing. If you're hungry, do you wish for food? And if you wish for food, how is that working for you? If you want a Hulk 181, this is what I suggest to you. You take a picture of Hulk 181. Well, you get a clip of it, you print it out, you post it on your wall, and you say to yourself every day, I'm going to get that book, but here's the thing, you have to figure out how you're going to get it. Wishing does nothing. You know why most people fail? It's because they spend their life hoping, wishing, and putting themselves down and saying, I can't, I won't, I never will. If you want to win a race, 
yes, it's nice to be actually in the race. And yes, you do have to run. But if you're out of shape and you don't train, you're not going to win. So you're going to have to put in the effort. That's the thing that people don't understand. Like even the people that try to do that secret video, you know, the secret where you just wish for something and it just happens to appear. It doesn't work that way. You got to put in the effort. If you're hungry and you're lying in bed and you don't get up to get food, you're going to starve to death. You could pray and wish all you want. You'll pray and wish yourself to death. You want food, you get up off your butt and get it. And if you don't have it, you find a way to get it. Some people are willing to put their hand out and stand in the middle of the road or in the middle of a street and say, can you please help me? Even though they're subject to embarrassment and people making fun of them. Some people are willing to put themselves in that position to get the things that they want. But you have to make the effort. So here's the thing, Sparky. Stop with the I wish I had a Hulk 181. You say to yourself, what do I need to do to get it? And then you do those things. You set a goal. You get excited about it. You don't see it as a chore. You see it as a reward for your hard work. Those who wish for things spend their whole life wishing. Those that hope for things spend their whole life hoping. Those that say they never get anything get nothing. The sad part is most people don't want to put in the effort. Like, for example, I say all the time, do your research, know what you're talking about. You want to know why I get the deals that I get? Not because I'm lucky. Not because I hope for things and they magically appear. It's because the one thing you don't see is there are times I will literally be on my computer for hours refreshing my computer screen every five seconds until I find that one needle in the haystack. I'm willing to put in the effort. And also, researching about grades, knowing the values of comics. And if I don't know the value, I will look it up. What do most people do? Most people ask questions or just watch other people's videos and say, well, that's enough information for me. If you want things, you have to put in the effort. Well, you don't have to, but don't be surprised you don't get what you want. Because remember, they like they say, you get what you give. You give nothing, why are you expecting everything? And I'm not saying anyone as in you in particular, I'm saying you as in general. So you have to set up goals. You have to be positive. You have to see this as fun. Comic collecting should not be a chore. It should not be a burden. It should not be a heartache or a headache. It should be fun. So if you can only get reprints of every book and you're happy with them, that's great. Because remember, there are many quote-unquote snooty kind of collectors that will look down on you if you only have a reprint and yet they are mad at somebody because the price of a book went up because they say how much they love a book and how much it's fun to read well if it's that important to you to read it who cares if it's a first print second print third print or a reprint still has the same pictures still has the same words but most people are not honest even with themselves and you wonder why they're angry or depressed all the time. You get what you give. So if you're depressed all the time, you're going to get things in life that make you depressed. If you're angry all the time, you're going to have things always happen that make you angry. If you're jealous all the time, everything you see is going to make you jealous. Or you can change that. And here's another, um, another bit of advice, Sparky. And this is very important. Because it's all about the words. Remember, emotion is energy in motion. Create your own energy. And it comes with words. Words are volumes of speech. Speech is vibration. Vibration is energy. Energy is light. So Sparky writes, I believe in those words. You speak the truth. Then don't believe in them. Know them. There's a huge difference. There's the word lie right in the middle of the word believe. Stop believing, start knowing. When somebody is in love, they know it. If you believe you love somebody, you don't. It's just like being hungry. When your stomach is growling, you don't say, oh, I believe I'm hungry. No, you say you're hungry. And then you fix the problem. 
problem reaction solution words are very important change your mindset don't say I believe in something say I know it to be true that's the difference that's the game that's the trick that's the thing many successful people will never tell you so Sith Lord says he's hungry right now well you could wish for food you can hope for food you could be jealous that others have food or you can find a way to get yourself some food it's all about making the effort because just imagine for example it's Sith saying he's hungry just imagine if he says oh I'm hungry but I don't have any food what am I gonna do and starts crying and moping and feeling depressed is that gonna help his problem no so it's the same thing with your comics if you love them and they make you happy it should be a joyous occasion that is why regardless of the book that I get regardless if it was the flavor of the month and now it's worth a dollar when I bought it I was happy there are no regrets with any purchase and trust me you've seen books that I have that have made money or they went up in value I have plenty of books that have gone down in value and I love them just as much trust me I grew up in the 80s and 90s 85 percent of my books are books that will never sell but I still am happy I have them and that's why even when I had to sell some of my books it was almost like selling a part of me because if you collect comics like I do and I know many of you do it almost becomes a way of life where the comics are almost a part of you so when you have to sell one of your books because you had to it almost hurts so that's why and I'll post the link again and if anybody can um, share the link it really helps and don't forget sign up for the cash back program um, that's free to do but see that's something I'm doing to help my situation because if somebody clicks on that Ebates link and signs up and spends $25 or more within the first 90 days I get a one-time $20 to $5 referral fee so that's me doing the effort of helping to put food on the table or get a comic that I want but it also benefits you because then you get the cash back I'm selling some of my comic mystery boxes graded and ungraded comics some books like I said yesterday and I'm still shocked that no one's gotten it is one of my lower grade giant size X-Men number one that book is guaranteed to continue to go up so my point is I know this is a long video and if you're one of my power viewers let me know if you watch this from beginning to end now it's easy to just say it but like I said your life should be about your integrity being a person of your word it doesn't mean you're gonna get everything right but be as honest as you can and if you watch my videos that's what I try and do to the best of my ability I'm no angel I'm not perfect I don't get everything right there are times I'll make guesses and assumptions and they don't work out but that's life but try and be a good person you know even with me struggling and losing one of our cats we now have two kittens outside of our house they're about it looks to be about a year old because there's a lot of strays here in Florida and yet even though I'm not making millions yet where I'm actually spending some of my own money to help these two cats so they'll never have to go hungry as long as I'm living here now we can't take them in but we're making sure two to three times a day I the first thing I did is I went to Sam's Club bought a huge thing of chopped steak to feed this kitten because she was starving it's better to give than to receive but it's also it feels good to get self get yourself things from hard work and making an effort or coming up with an idea and making a plan or you could be like most people who just sit back and say oh people like this are crazy or stupid or full of nonsense and let's make fun of them and let's laugh at them everybody get on my side and laugh at that person and they wonder why they're always angry or never getting what they really want or never satisfied because they have a black hole that they know or they don't know that they can never fill life is too short to make yourself upset over trivial things or letting others affect your life so this this video is more than just comics it's about life itself 
You want to be a good person? Well, you got to do good things. You got to think in a positive way. If you spend your whole life crying and wishing and hoping and being angry and being jealous of what other people do, you're spending all your time doing those things instead of putting in the effort to make your life better. And that was nice. Chris, you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate that. He just did a $1.99 super chat, and he writes, better to give than to receive. And there you go. See, that is a kind gesture. And notice that I'm just as happy as if, if that was a $10,000 donation, which I would flip out, but the fact that a person did a dollar ninety nine, is that going to help me to retire? Of course not. But you know what? That is a great gesture. It is a kind person that does something that says, I'm going to give somebody something just because. And I saw a birthday the other day. I was swimming in the pool, and there was some kids having a birthday. And they actually invited me over. Now, I didn't know any of these people. I didn't even know there was a birthday going on. I just wanted to go swimming for the day. And the little girl, whose birthday it was, people were giving her presents, and she wasn't happy about any of them. She just looked at it, put it down, and said, okay, what's next? Would go through them, put it down, pick up the other one. And then comes over to me, which, by the way, I didn't even know who they were. I've met them like once or twice in the pool, and I actually felt bad, but she came over to me and said, what did you get me? And I felt a little bad because I didn't know there was a birthday party going on, and let alone being invited to it for a few seconds. But I actually felt bad. But in a way, I'm like, that girl is never going to be happy. That's a horrible way to live life. Now, she could end up getting everything that she wants in her life and being well taken care of in the future. Who knows? But is that the way, a right way to live life, always expecting more instead of appreciating what you have? And this is nice, comms collection. And you guys don't have to do this. I don't want you to think that this is something you have to do. But um, they did a Canadian um, super chat of 10, 10 Canadian dollars. And he says, um, and if you ever do a super chat, um, it gives you the ability to write something. Make sure you do that. I want to make sure I read it for you. Because I'm one of those people... That if somebody's going to be kind enough to do a super chat, I mean, one of the things that bothered me on larger channels is I can understand people sometimes having to ignore the regular chat because if you if you're trying to do a certain video and you're just reading the chat the whole time, it's going to take away from it, and most people are not going to want to hear that. But what always bothered me was when somebody was kind enough to send a super chat and they just let it scroll by. I could never do that because then that's that's not appreciating somebody doing something nice. But um, Tom's Collections writes, in quotes, low grade is better than no grade. Thank you for the continued gems, Chris. And thank you. But that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's appreciating what you have. You don't have to have a better collection than somebody else. And if you do, that's great. But don't do it to try and one-up somebody or think you need to be better than somebody else or look down at somebody that may not have what you have. Because yes, you have the freedom and the choice and the free will to do that, but is that the legacy you want to leave in this world? It's like I've said, I, I have people that make that don't like me for whatever reasons. They believed a lot of lies that were placed on me. And I got tired of defending myself. And there are going to be people that will thumb down every single video and they have thumbed down every single video. Heck, my video about showing the last... Um, video of my cat Luna before we had to put her down has eight thumbs down. There are people that are out there that'll do that. You could easily do that and do it anonymously. But does that make you a good person? Is that the life you want to live? You wonder why your collection or your life is not what you want. It's in shambles or it's not the way you wish it to be. Maybe it's because you're not giving anything in your life. And when I mean giving giving kindness, opening a door for somebody. If somebody falls down, instead of laughing at them, how about helping them up? See the example of negative people and inspire yourself to become somebody that is not that way. Because the difference between them and I is people here care about what I do and say. Because a lot of what I do and say are to help others without asking for anything. 
Those people that want to hate me for whatever, do it anonymously. And do it based on lies and misinformation because it makes them feel better. And there's groups of people that have major problems with me. I don't know why, but now I no longer care. But I can mention it. And that's okay. And that's why when I originally started my channel, I could have easily titled this, I Love Comics. But I put it, We Love Comics. Because this was supposed to be more than just me. It's about us that do it. And Andrew just did a super chat. I mean, is this really? This is really nice. Uh, Andrew Kemper says thank you is all I have to say, and that's all. That's all one can say. But see, this is what I'm talking about: karma, doing good, doing it selflessly. I never make a video saying, "Oh my God, I hope I get these people to send me money." But no, people do it out of kindness. That's the difference. And for some reason, uh, Midwest comic, I had to approve his comic, uh, his comment. And um, Hillside Vang Bronze says, Chris, the problem is that people love to hate just to hate. You're right. There are people who love to hate. But let me ask you, do you think that's going to make anybody remember or care about them outside of maybe people they're married to or their children? That's not the legacy I want to leave. I have complete strangers here that cared about my cat, that cared about my move, who appreciate my advice. These are, Most of you I'll never meet in my lifetime, but that doesn't mean goodness cannot show through. And how many people have benefited from my advice? I've never said, here's my advice, you got to pay for it. you got to sign up for my website to get the information if i have information i give it out freely because that's the right thing to do and johnny future says it best it's easier to hate and harder to love it takes no effort to hate it takes no effort to destroy anybody can take a painting and destroy it it takes nothing more than a lighted match but how hard was it to make that painting not many people can do it and do it beautifully but everybody can take a knife and cut it apart. That takes no effort, no talent. And all your hatred did was destroy something beautiful. Or at least something beautiful in the eyes of the creator. And Comics and Beer says, I still love my Hulk 181 reprint from the 90s. That's great. If you can never afford or you never get a Hulk 181, at least you could say you read it. You read the story. And if it makes you happy, that's all that matters. You know, who knows if I'll ever be lucky enough to have a first appearance of Batman or Superman. Or the first appearance of Spider-Man. But if I ever get a coverless copy and that's all I can afford and I was lucky enough to get it, I'm going to be just as happy as if it was a 7.0. Would I be thrilled to have a 7.0? I mean, who wouldn't? But be happy with what you have. If you're eating macaroni and cheese because that's all you can afford, be very happy and lucky you have that macaroni and cheese because there's plenty of people that would die and kill for it. There's always somebody that's going to be jealous of what you have. Don't be those people. Be happy with your collection. If you don't like your collection, you have to say to yourself, what are you going to do to make it better? If you sit there saying, I can't, or I won't, or it's too hard, or I don't know how, you're never going to achieve. If you don't know how, learn how. If you don't have the money, there's plenty of other ways. Like I said, you could do trades. You could mow somebody's lawn. You have some form of a gift. Why aren't you using it? This is one of my gifts. I was able to get some of these comics... And be able to get some of the money to buy my house because of my gift of speech. I turned it into something that was a materialistic necessity. So you can turn a word into everything in the world. Because remember, every single thing you have or seen in your life was once somebody's idea. Which means it was first a thought which means it was first non-existent. 
Then somebody had to come up with the thought. Now, it's wonderful to think of something, but just imagine if the person who created the light bulb just thought about it. That helping anybody? They actually had to fail many times until it works. Most people fail once and say, I give up. Well, failure is, is life's way of saying, don't go in that direction, dummy. You ever play a video game and you see somebody walking into a wall and they keep trying to walk in that direction? You can walk that way forever. You're going nowhere. People see failure as the end all instead of seeing it as, well, thank God I don't have to try that anymore. And you find a different way. Those that succeed always deal with failure. But how they deal with failure is they don't give up. Even if it happens two or three times. The average person will try, fail, and then give up. How are you ever going to win the race if you give up after the first run? And yes, um, Coin Collections, a Comms Collection says it well. You must fail in order to learn and grow. You learn more from your failures than you will ever be taught from some person. I will take wisdom over intelligence any day. Because intelligence means you're just regurgitating what somebody else told you. Experience is you actually doing it. So this video is almost an hour long. I will be shocked if there are more than 10 people that will honestly say they watch from beginning to end. But you know what? Those 10 people are probably going to be the ones that have their life change in some way and decide to make an effort. You get what you give. You give nothing but hate. You're going to have nothing but hate to have. You want a better collection? What are you doing to improve it? Are you crying about it? Are you jealous of other people and angry about other people and spending your whole day thumbing down their videos because you want to show your hatred that you don't have what they have? Or are you getting off your butt and making things happen? That choice is yours. You know, how many people want to lose weight and they eat diet pills and wonder why it doesn't work? You want to, you want to lose weight? You exercise, you eat better, plain and simple. It takes effort, and it's not as good as your sodas and your candy bars and your cakes and your ice creams, but they also won't kill you. One of the reasons why our cat died is because we didn't learn until it was too late that the dry food that we feed our animals actually turns into carbohydrates, which turns into sugar, which overloads their kidneys and their livers, and they die from... Uh, diabetes and heart disease and liver disease and pancreatitis. We had to learn that the hard way. But they'll sell it to you because it's cheap and it tastes good. So like I said, this video is all over the place. It's more than just comics. It should help you in all aspects of your life if you see it that way. Most people will not watch this whole video. Most people will probably have turned it off after five minutes and say this is ridiculous, crazy, or too long. People will sit through a two-hour junk movie where they'll learn nothing, but they won't sit through an hour video that could change their life if they just listened. And those people wonder why they never succeed. Now, obviously, my video isn't the answer to everything or the answer for everyone, but if I made this video and it inspired one person, then I'm proud that I did it. So if you're one of the people, and you know, sometimes it's hard when it's a live show, you could just come in now, but if you end up eventually watching this video from beginning to end, I want you to be proud that you're one of my power viewers. And if you're one of my ultra power viewers that watches all the videos that you watch from beginning to end, and again, it could take days to watch the whole thing, be proud of it. If you can, please share the links. Even if you cannot get any of my comics or you cannot or don't want to join the cashback program for whatever reason if you could share these links it will help my channel and I appreciate all those that do that and see if I did this effort and somebody was kind enough to share my link and it helped me in some way then aren't I glad that I did something positive instead of just making some hateful video or something that I know will get clicks and views
You know how many people on YouTube sell out their souls or sell their integrity just to make a video that they know everybody wants to hear and it goes against everything that's in their principles? My other channel has 47,000 subscribers. The average view count is about $900, $900, is about 900 views now because YouTube is blocking it and yet I'll still make videos because I don't do it for the money. Would it be nice to have it? Of course it would. Anybody that says it's they, they're not happy about making the money is just plain lying. But if you're doing it solely for the money, you're not going to be happy and you're doing it for the wrong reasons. So thank you very much to all of you, even if you just watch the video. If you thumb it up, that helps. If you share it, it helps. If you know somebody that could benefit from a little inspir inspiration, please let them watch this video. They may not be into comics, but something in this video might help them think about something differently. You want to make your world a better place, you have to say to yourself, what are you doing other than complaining about it? People love to complain, because it's easy to do. It takes no effort. It's like destroying that painting. Be the creator of the painting, not the destroyer of the painting. Even if people don't like it, if you made it, that's a creation that you brought on this world that wasn't there. So if nobody else sees your vision, who cares? Don't do it for them, do it for you. And if you do it because you love it, you may just inspire others. So even if you've been thinking about, oh, well, you know, I don't have a big collection in my comic book collection, I can't make a YouTube video. Well, why not? Every single person out there will always have somebody that will be attracted to what they do. I mean, not for nothing, I'm no PewDiePie. And I'm definitely not the number one channel for comic books. But yet, I still have 35 people watching this one-hour video. There's always somebody out there who will buy your product or listen to your voice or see something that you created. So do you want to send the message of positivity or negativity? Negativity tends to be more popular these days. Is that right? I'll leave that up to you. So thanks for listening. I'm going to leave the link one more time. If anybody wants to get any of my comics that I'm selling or they want to join the cashback program, you are more than welcome to. I thank you so much for listening. I know I can ramble at times, but like I said, that's just part of who I am, and I will not change it. My wife loves it, my family loves it, and most important, I love it. And if you do, then that's absolutely a bonus. So thank you very much. Your thumbs up will tell me that you enjoyed this video. If you share it, Always appreciate it, and now I'm just going to shut the hell up because I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Let me do today's surprise subscriber shout-out. I'm going to give that to Luke. Luke, you are today's surprise subscriber shout-out. And Comic Addiction, thank you. He's got his thumbs. It's always good to have thumbs. Don't let them get cut off. Have a good day, everybody. And don't forget, it is not you. It is not I. It is We Love Comics.